Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're having a go at nail binding. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. turning viewers and to any new viewers a very warm welcome to you as i mentioned in the opening to this video we're taking a look at nail binding today now this is not a craft that i have any level of skill in i have previously had one maybe two attempts with a darning needle which is not the right tool for the job uh, so now that i have some proper nail binding needles and a book to show me how to do it i'm going to have a go and i'm going to film the attempt so <laughs> pure wool yarn this is jameson and smith left over from a previous project it's a spit spliceable which is important because in our binding you work in lengths of yarn rather than from the skein i've got importantly my instruction booklet and um, when i bought this booklet it came with an our binding needle so i'll show you that in a bit um as we're working in lengths i've got pair of scissors and I have two nail binding needles as you can see I've not used them yet so this one is a wood nail binding needle it's fairly short it's got a nice big hole bit of a point on the end and it is magnolia and that's from Pidge Lee that's the other needle, this one, this is a bone needle, it's a cow bone. Um, so obviously if you are somebody who doesn't want to be using animal, pro animal products, go with wooden needles. Um, bone needles are available. This one's a bit longer, so I suspect this one's going to be easier to get started with. And this I got from the same place as I got this book. It came uh, as a kit effectively. And the name has just leapt out of my head, so I will pop that on screen of the seller that sent this. Uh, they're based in York, which has a Viking centre. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, have a go. I'm going to try and make sure that I keep the instruction book out of shot because paid for the book. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a go at getting some nail binding done. That bows well, dropping the needle already. Um, I'm not aiming to make anything particular with this like go session. It's essentially sampling stitches and uh, learning how to do it i'll try and make something once i've got a better handle on the stitches okay so uh yeah let's see how i get on okay so nail binding is uh, a very old craft um there is as far as i'm aware some evidence of it coming up in egypt but a lot of the evidence comes from sort of viking related areas um, I will say, if, as you're looking at me attempting these stitches, there is a weird thing going on with the light. That's because the weather took a turn for me halfway through filming this bit. Um, so I had to do some jiggery pokery with the editing to um, <laughs> enable you to see what I'm doing. Uh, it's not a how-to, it's just me having a go. Um, so I'm not going to explain what I'm doing as such in any great detail. Um, just as you can see, the stitch is shaped around the thumb use a needle and you're going through loops um, go to somebody with a bit more experience in nail binding to find out the detailed how to's um, obviously once i've got a bit more experience i might do something like that but uh, for the time being i really literally am just having a go 
Uh, so it's a precursor to, to knitting and crochet. Now obviously the big difference with knitting and crochet and nail binding is the tool and the thumb. Um, whereas obviously with knitting you're using two needles and you're tensioning around your fingers and with crochet you're using one hook and again you're tensioning with your fingers. For nail binding the thumb is, is what dictates your gauge. The, the needle is, is more like a, a, a sewing needle that you would use these days. Um, and tensioning is not really that much of a thing as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, you give it a little bit of a tug to straighten out the cord after you've taken it off your thumb, but um, what you get off your thumb is essentially what you get. Um, I have managed to make my stitches a little bit smaller after they've come off the thumb, because obviously my thumb is quite chunky. So uh, yeah, it's going to take a bit of practice to get the uh, the level of finish that I'm, I'm looking for there. Um, but a bit more about nail binding itself. Um, according to heritagecrafts.org.uk, which has a database of endangered and at-risk crafts within the UK. Um, so they, they classify them depending on how many people are making their living from that craft, how many people are teaching that craft to other people as a job. So professional level practitioners, not just hobbyists. Um, so according to them, nail, nail binding is an endangered craft. They put the historic area of significance as mainly areas with Viking cultural influence, so East Anglia and the north of England, um, currently practised in York, so that's where the professional nail binders are in the UK. Uh, origin in the UK from the 5th century evidence of Anglo-Saxon and Viking cultural practice in the UK, also possibly pre-existing this period. Because we just don't know. When you get far enough back in history, the evidence becomes quite scant, particularly for textiles and fibre crafts, because the tools and the, the fabrics just don't survive the passage of time. And so currently, according to heritagecrafts.org.uk, there are two professional nail binders in the UK. So two people who make their primary income from nail binding. There are currently between 11 and 20 people in the UK who are professionals, but it's a secondary income. So it's a sideline to their main income. And there are no official trainee nail binders in the UK. So that, that's uh, not very many people. That's a total of at the most 22 people making an income out of nail binding. Um, the current total number of serious amateur makers is blank. Current total number of leisure makers, they've got 50 to 100. And the minimum number of craftspeople required, um, I don't know what that category means, but again, it's 50 to 100. I, I presume it's it's enough, it's, that's the number that's needed to keep it in endangered and not extinct. Um, I'm not 100% certain. Um, so they've they've got a bit here about the history of, of nail binding. So they talk about it being in Israel, where they found the earliest example from about 6000 BC um, and all the different names and what have you. Um, so it talks about where you can find different stuff and, the, and some of the stitches and some of the techniques. So it's, it's an interesting site and obviously it's a UK specific site. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting and it, it highlights the issues of the crafts that they class as endangered and so on. Okay, so I've had a little go. I'm going to need a lot more practice. Um, so this is the one first attempt with the one loop stitch and that's the second attempt with the same stitch. So I mean there's progress but it's a bit loose, a bit uneven. Uh, that's just going to take practice to get better um, but it's quite a loose stitch. So I also had a try with the two loop stitch. I've got no idea how to finish them off. So. Uh, hmm. Hopefully that's further in the book. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a bit more of a substantial stitch. As you're working through two loops off the thumb. But, uh, so yeah, so that's going to take a bit of practice. Obviously got my book to, to work through. So this is uh, Nail Binding, the Easiest, Clearest Ever Guide. Um, it is written in two languages. It's written in English and in a Scandinavian language. I presume Norwegian, but I'm not certain. Um, some of the translation into English is a little bit non-native speaker, which is fine. Um, you understand what they're getting at, but 
it can take a little bit out of the moment. Uh, it's got lots of pictures in it and it has got some projects at the back for you to have a go at. It also explains spit splicing if you've not done that before. Um, so yeah, so I'll keep working through this. I'm also going to be looking at YouTube as well um, to, to sort of see the stitches in action as it were and see if that helps improve them. Um, yeah, interesting technique. Uh, very, very portable. Um, so yeah. So I hope you found that interesting. Now, as I say, I'm a very much a beginner with, with nail binding. So I'm going to keep working on those stitches and when I'm confident enough, I'll have a go at working on one of the projects in the back of the book, which I would then obviously show to you. Certainly in one of the, uh, what I've been working on this month videos, it's not going to be January's. Spoiler. So when I'm ready, I'll have a go at that. I may or may not do some more standalone nail binding videos. We'll see how much I end up doing and how good I get at it. Um, I do think it's a very interesting craft. I think it's nice to be able to sort of connect to that heritage that is related to knitting and crochet, but it isn't the same. It's, its own skill, its own technique, and has this huge level of history to it. Um, it how people came up with the, the knowledge, the understanding of fibres to be able to create fabric astounds me. There was nothing like it before. Um, the people who invented weaving and the people who invented nail binding and the people who invented knitting and crochet and all these kind of things. How that idea even occurs to you is, is beyond me, but I find it fascinating. And being able to connect to them by doing those crafts is amazing. Um, so yes, yeah, so I will be dabbling in, in nail binding in the future and I will show you the progress. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed spending some time in my company, there'll be some other videos popping up on the screen that uh, may be of interest to you, so feel free to check them out. And obviously, I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. But until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.